Ooh, it's hot out here. Yeah. All right, five A studs, not five A holes. Tungsten carbide bits. We're gonna make some five A holes. Yeah, and just like that, she go on there. We need to get some more brake clean though. All right, we got both sides done. Brand new calipers, brand new pads, brand new rotors all the way around, brand new pads all the way around, two new rear calipers. I'm gonna button up this side, strap it back down on the trailer and we're gonna head to Chuck's, get it up on the lift and have Chuck help me bleed this. We're gonna bleed it the old fashioned way. You know, just uh, press down on the pedal, hold down, crack the line, let everything shoot out everywhere, and then, uh, you know, do it again and again and again. You need help there, dude? Ah. <laughs> what? You gotta give it a wobble. Here, wobble that tire. Yeah, I know. Mm -hmm. It's working so well. Well, you gotta have some patience, Chuck. Yeah, I like that, huh? Oh, you gotta pick up on the tire. I'm only gonna shower you. Alright, alright, alright. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. Alright, so it's 6 something a.m. Um, we're gonna be heading to Mexico, inevitably, but doing now is going to Walmart real quick so we can get us a you know 12 volt laptop charger because I can't find my other little inverter so we'll just head to Walmart real quick like to get one and uh yeah there ain't much uh ain't much we're gonna be able to do but <clears throat> the goal is to get into boost just to make sure fueling is, you know, good enough. You know, I don't want 30% uh, closed loop adjustment. <laughs> so we're just trying to make sure fueling's adequate. And uh, out of the hole, you know, we're not going to be able to hook up regardless, boost or no boost, because uh, we don't make boost right now off the line. But we are going to try to do a little you know, maybe get a rolling hit, see how much uh, boost we can get out of that. Oh, I'm sorry. All right, let's take this too. <laughs> Hmm. Oh, darling, girl. Alright. <laughs> cool. Who likes the alternator. Alright, out here in Mexico. Just saw a cyclist, you know, one of them dudes that rides on bicycles. He informed me, he said, just so you know, there's, there's a cop, a federale that's riding around out here. Now I was thinking to myself, hmm, federales in Mexico. Not likely, but can happen, you know? Um, yeah, I don't know. I feel like he said that just because he wants this place to be his. I don't know. Just this Mexico. Ain't your Mexico, fella. Ain't mine either. But I'll tell you what. Federales riding around in Mexico at 7 a.m.? That just don't seem right to me. I think he was just doing that to be a boomer. Well, anyways, let's get this pig unloaded and put down some track bite and see what we can do. Oh, man.
Chuck's plate. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I got a little bit of rubber, you know. All right, Fetter at least came out and said, uh, y'all aren't street racing, are you? Said, no, sir, we're heading home. So, uh, yeah, we're gonna take our blessings while we got them and get the hell out of here. <laughs> Shit! We got one hit, we hit boost cut, um, which is at 29 PSI. So it lit, didn't get it recorded. I think Thomas might've got it on his phone. So that'll be sick, but it, uh, it's hard to get these angles. But oh well, oh well, just is what it is. All right guys, let's go over this data log here. So this is where we step on the trans brake here and the torque converter, which is a 3600 stall, but this engine only makes so much torque down low because it's a 4.8. It flashes to about 2500 when the torque converter couples and now the engine starts fighting it up to our set rev limiter of 3000 RPM. So at 3000 RPM on the rev limiter, we're only building one pound of boost. Some turbos can light off at one pound. This turbo lights off around eight pounds. So we are at zero miles, well, we're at zero miles per hour. We let off and that's where the mile per hour starts going up. You can see how it has this weird spot right here because it spins tires and then it starts doing the run. And this is boost here, which is at 1.2 PSI. And then once it gets up to about, let's see, right here, 59 the RPM, um, we're at 8.2. PSI, and then instantly it skyrockets to 20, and then 25, and then a peak of 28.9, and it hits our boost cut, which is set at 29, and the ignition cuts. So we didn't get to make a full pass. We got to hit 7,500 RPM in second gear, which was um, definitely really fun from, uh, let's see, right about here. <laughs> 5700 rpm to this point was a ride <laughs> it was fun i mean it, it was pulling hard it was it was good that's what i like so something that you guys should look over when you're doing testing like this and i'll show you how we're going to and i'll tell you why uh it hit the boost cut and how to like stop that from happening but first i want to show you something you guys should look over now our target afr was 11.16 air fuel ratio on the gasoline scale for E85. And our actual AFR was 13.6, which is not where we want it. That's relatively lean. Uh, it's not blow up lean, but that's getting there. So first thing we're gonna look at is fuel pressure. And we noticed this dip, this big dip. So we had it at 60 PSI. The base one, baseline is like 57. The boost reference is working. It gets up to 60 from boost reference on the regulator. And then all of a sudden, we have this huge drop down to 40 PSI. So there's two things that can cause that because this is also a, sh a ton of volume of air and fuel being consumed at 7,476 RPM and 27 pounds of boost. That's a lot. So it's either running out of fuel pump or there's a voltage issue. So we check the battery and we notice that there is a dip about in the same exact spot of voltage that could be the alternator belt, the serpentine belt slipping because it doesn't know how to react to 700 or 7,500 RPM, 2,500 RPM, or, you know, um, or we're just running a fuel pump. Now it dropped to 13.5 volts, which is not bad. That shouldn't really cause that significant of fuel loss. So I'm just going to guess that it was, it was eating some fuel. So we need to add another fuel pump. So that's simple enough. We'll do that. So our next pass, 
would have been to run this on just wastegate, no dome pressure. And the reason why is because we have we have two wastegates, one for each side of the engine's exhaust banks. Like so you have two banks. So if you have an eight pound spring in one side and an eight pound spring in the other side, that's sixteen pounds of positive pressure you need to create for them to start opening when you add 10 psi of dome pressure split between both of those now you're adding an extra 20 psi on top of that because 10 each the engine needs out of one bank needs to make 10 the engine out of the other bank needs to make 10 for that 10 psi that you added so in total i needed to make 36 psi before the waste gates would start opening, and that's why we smashed into our uh, boost safety here, our boost cut, which is at 29 psi, and uh, didn't get to make a full rip. So without that 10 pounds, we would have only seen around 16 to 18 psi from waste gate alone from the dual 8 pound springs. So that was going to be the next hit, but didn't get to make it because the Federale showed up. So next time I'm putting three pound springs in each side. So it's a total of six PSI. And that way it gives me a little bit more room to work with the boost control because any number I put in is going to be times two because I'm splitting them on each uh, bank like evenly. So if I add five pounds, that's a total of 10. If I add 10, that's a total of 20, 20, a total of 40. So next move is add another fuel pump so we don't run out of fuel because that's really bad to run out of fuel but we know it it um it took it and we know how far off it is it's not too far off and put in three pound springs in the wastegates and good to go all right guys i'm sorry i couldn't get amazing video angles i actually forgot <laughs> my SD card for my GoPro. So that sucked. And then I set up my phone to record and the memory card in that was full. So it just stopped recording. So we got one video, thankfully, that Thomas got, um, my buddy, and you know, it wasn't the highest quality, but at least it's something. Next time we go out, we're definitely going to make sure we have all angles covered, multiple cameras. My wife wants to be there. She's like amazing at getting video. So we should have some crazy cool angles and I'm pulling out my GoPros and making sure everything is dialed before we go to the track. Hopefully go to the track. I probably have to buy a fire suit and a helmet. I definitely have to buy a helmet. I don't know about the fire suit, but you know, we need nitrous. That's $550. We need uh, another fuel pump. That's $125. We need some fittings to make three go into one 8 a.m. That's probably another $40, maybe 50. So it's just in time, but I wanted to show you guys this data log and kind of explain how things worked and how I look at things and check things. All right, guys, if you liked today's video, like, comment, and subscribe. If you're already subscribed, thanks for continuing to watch. And I'm sorry I haven't been getting those awesome videos I typically make out to you guys. I've just been super busy with work. I will see you guys in the next one.